Praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed night. I have a deep subject that I'm about to hit. Praise God, praise God. You know, um, I was just meditating for the last two days. I've just been really meditating with God. Just um, one thing I want to talk to you all about. Here's how this is supposed to go. When you are ministering, and we all ministers of the gospel, don't get it twisted. Just some are apostles, prophets, evangelists, and so forth. You must, th this is protocol, and I'm teaching now, praise God, hallelujah. Sometimes the reason why pastors, preachers, and teachers, they get so overwhelmed is because now you don't take time with God. You guys haven't really seen me on here. I've been, you know, like posting, but I don't just get up on here anymore. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I got to spend time with God because here's the deal. As I minister to you, then I better go sit myself some down, somewhere down. Come on, somebody, hallelujah, and allow God to replenish me. Allow God to revive me. Allow God to minister to me. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Y'all got to understand how this thing works. That's how people get um, oppressed, suppressed, depressed, and stressed. You have to have a balance in life. I don't know who that's for. You have to have a balance. You can't, I don't care if it's work, school, even the children, you have to have a balance, but this is going, this subject is going to get real deep. So anyway, um, I'm looking at there's, you know, there's more and more killings of husbands and wives and just people, family. So I said, God, what's going on? God says, Deanna, they're cohabiting with demons. They're tainting the body of Christ. They're tainting people. What am I saying? Oh Lord, this is going to get so deep. Some of you going to get offended. I'm, some of you going to get offended. Some of you going to get offended. Let me go ahead and do my disclaimer. Let me tell you something. We have touched the unclean thing. When I say we, I'm talking about the body of Christ. And I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to, I got a lot of stuff to read to you because we want to feel good. We want to look good. Y'all hear what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, I got to tell you, uh, thus said the Lord before I even roll down this um, street. God says that he's tired of ministers, preachers. You know, back in the day when people would give you an offering, a, a love offering, um, now they have to pay y'all 15, 20,000 to go preach the gospel. God says that should not be. So y'all charging too much. I, I, hey, take it up with God. Secondly, y'all got to stop just, um, how could I say this? It's like, if y'all don't like people, you guys don't want to uh, minister to them or it, that's not how it goes. Or you don't want to connect with somebody because you think you all that y'all better stop acting all brand new. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I feel the power of God up in here. God has blessed you. If it had not been for the glory of God, the blessings of God, you wouldn't even be in that position. We've got to go back to the oracles of God. What are the oracles of God? God, who do you say I should choose? Come on, somebody. That's what the apostles did when Judas was hung himself. That's how the lot fell on Matthias because they went to God. God, you choose you. Everybody got to go back to God. You know, right now is about who like who it's about them dollars. Y'all better stop playing with God. I'm serious. A lot of people just playing with God. So let me get to what I am saying. So God was saying, Deanna, the reason why they're cohabiting with demons. Um, I got to walk this thing out. Have you ever liked somebody and you know, they was full of demons, but you still messed with them. Mm, how many of us all did that? Somebody just tell the truth. You have done it. You know, you have to talk about, well, I can work with that. You got to stop cohabiting with demons. God says, you remember Samson, Samson kept messing with Delilah. She was the lie from the gate and look what happened. Eventually because of Delilah, Samson died. He didn't have to die. Now, now I, I researched that whole scripture and everything. Samson didn't have to die, but because I think he was so embarrassed, he said, God, let me kill more Philistines than I ever did, but let me die with them. That's because his spirit was broken. Can I tell you something? The enemy is after your spirit. The enemy is after you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm telling you up in here. And he's sending men and women. Let me tell you something. The three things that people will always fall by, and I'm just being real. It will always be money. Men and women, fourth is power. Don't act like you don't know what I'm saying because I have met some of the most beautiful people in my life, beautiful spirit, but yet they meet the wrong woman or the wrong man. They will conform and turn into somebody that you don't even know. And as a matter of fact, they don't even know because that's a spirit. Oh, come on, somebody. Let me walk this thing out. I'm coming out of Ezra. Ezra, the book of Ezra, chapter 10. Let me go ahead and walk this thing out because y'all going to understand in a minute. Ezra, and we're going to start with chapter 10, verse 3. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble 
at the commandment of our Lord. Let it be done according to the Lord. Do you know that's what also messed up Solomon? Solomon took strange wives. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me go ahead and walk this thing out. I got a lot of stuff to read. Hold on, y'all. I'm telling you, I was like, God, what is going on? He said, I'm going to tell you what's going on. So let me read some stuff to you. Praise God. Praise God. He says, often I minister to victims that are self-focused society that seeks personal and sexual pleasure without considering the cause. Let's talk about that. That's what's taken up out half of the people that are even in ministry. You guys want to be with people just because they're beautiful, just because they fine, just because they got a good credit score, just because pastor like them, just like this one, like them. But guess what? Sexual pleasure without considering the cost. Let's keep reading. The unwanted consequences of some heterism, children often illegitimate or discarded are usually the victims who suffer the most. So when you get with people just because they find and, and it's not God, God didn't ordain you. Don't you understand it's the children that suffer the most? Let's continue. Now, there is a real economic evidence of this tragedy. The offspring of unmarried, even cohabiting couples now represent 25% of all births, 59% of all births outside of marriage. The problem, according to a recent article in the Wall Street Journal, such families suffer financially. Y'all know that's true. Um, I don't have to go there, but you and I both know most of the time, let's say women, be young women, we, we're going to just talk about, let's say example A, I ain't gonna call no names, nothing like that. If you are a young woman and you start having babies and that man don't marry you, you know, doggone well, you're getting ready to suffer financially, especially if he is hood and he's not saved and hood, hold on. Hood is not a color. Oh, come on. Somebody ghetto is not a color. Come on. Somebody unresponsibility is not a color. Oh, come on. Somebody hallelujah up in here. I'm about to break this thing down. Data shows that married households are far better off financially. Uh, that's because they're um, working with the laws of God. They are more likely to own homes and provide a college education for their children. Now, God is not saying that people that don't have money is not going to make it. But he's saying that people that do it the right way, they oftentimes are more financially and better off. They are more likely to own homes provide a college education cohabiting couples are more likely to split up cohabiting so you know that means shacking up all right they say cohabiting i say shacking okay the result is a patchwork of half sibling stuff parents child support issues and revolving door of family visits now y'all understand how about all this stuff Y'all going to get in a minute, cohabiting with demons. All this leads to complexity and instability, say Sarah Milani and what your sociology, um, psychology, I'm sorry, pro professor at Princeton University. There's just the complexity and instability in these households that are new, enormous. Transaction costs involve staying married. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So let's get to this one. This is what I really want to talk about. And there are a lot more demons from these situations that are also an invitation to all kinds of illicit behavior, including incest, molestation, and physical abuse. Before they decide to move in with a significant other, Couples should ask themselves what's the real cause may be to the children conceived from such unions. How many times, and I don't mean any, any I'm not bashing anybody, but let's talk, let me slow it down because I could be talking fast, y'all know I'm from Louisiana. Um, this is where demonic soul ties come in. This is where incest, this is where now the children, let's say he's he's abusing the um the wife or the, the it could be the other way around. It could be a mental abuse. Don't you know that nine out of 10 children that have been in those households or in those homes, they start suffering the same thing. I have, you know, I used to date this guy and, you know, I've been through everything and y'all know what time it was as far as my ex-husband. And I remember him telling me that his dad used to beat his mom. How many of you have the same story to where you married someone where you thought you would break the cycle because we all think we could break the cycle. That's a generation, of course. It stops with us. I mean, we'll say the prayer. We'll say the quotes. We'll say the spiritual um, scriptures. We will do all that, but it's still there because guess what? The sin is issue aside, there may be some cohabitants that do not make it seem to work. But spending one day with me trying to spiritually pick up demonized pieces of the puzzle. That's what I want to talk about. Demonized pieces of this puzzle. This is what God was talking to me about. He said, Deanna, they got to stop cohabiting with demons. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. What am I saying? I've been saying this for about maybe a couple of weeks now. God has been having me on marriage. Isn't that odd? You cannot 
choose someone that is in demonic sin. And then you talking about, oh, he going to be saved in a couple of months. Everything takes Everything's a process. Even staying saved is a process. Making a good choice is a process. And guess what? That doesn't happen overnight. I don't care if you have a miracle. Every day you have to make the good choice. Come on, somebody. A right choice. And so God is saying that you are picking people that have demonic soul ties. And then you're thinking everything going to be peachy peachy. And God said that it's not going to happen. You have to start. Here's the deal. You got to ask God. God, show me their spirit. Remember I told y'all that? You have to ask God. And when you see it, you have to say, no, I don't care how good it looks, how fine it looks, how much money. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God is saying this. It's too much people that are cohabiting with demons. We have to go back to the oracles of God. Let's go back all the way to the beginning. Y'all Adam and Eve. What happened? We could blame Adam and we could blame Eve. Most of you do. Most of you say, well, Adam should have usurped his authority. He should say, look, Eve, we're not going to eat that. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. But I wonder, have you ever wondered? Come on, somebody, walk with me. Let's go back in time. Have you ever wondered why Adam allowed her to even speak to the serpent and he was present? Anybody ever wonder? You can write it up in the comments. Anybody ever wonder? I wonder if just a part of him wanted to see what was going to happen. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. It's all, it all started with Adam and Eve. Don't you understand? We have a real enemy that comes to tempt us, to try us, to test us, but he can't do it officially and effectively if there's not always something in us. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If there is nothing inside of you, he cannot do it. James chapter one says that, that when you are tempted, that you are tempted and drawn away by your own lust. You are enticed by your own sin. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Y'all hear what I'm saying up in here? We got to stop playing with demons. We got to stop living with demons. We got to stop sleeping with demons. We got to stop cohabiting with demons. We got to stop fellowship with demons. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Some of you know that church is, is witchcraft, full of witchcraft. And you go sit yourself right up in that church because guess what? That's a famous pastor. That's a famous preacher. That's a famous teacher. I'm going somewhere up in here and know it. It don't sound good. It's not supposed to sound good. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Cohabiting with demons. Can I tell you something? What has been a real struggle used to be a struggle. When I was young, you know how you meet people and, well, they're not that bad and they're nice. I stopped doing that. I stopped dating potential. I stopped marrying potential. I stopped um, even being friends with potential. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't know if you like me up in here. I, I stopped playing with potential because potential can potentially be dangerous. I'm going somewhere. God wants you to examine your whole life. Anything that threatens your relationship with God, it needs to go. Man, woman, child, whatever. Y'all not ready for me up in here tonight. And if it's your own children, then y'all need to sit them down. Guess what? We're going to do something different in 2020. You go on to church. You're going to stay in this house or you go on to church. For me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, that's why them kids out of order. That's why people are out of order. Husbands, you supposed to be the head of the house. You shouldn't have everybody in the house should be um following your beat, your drum. Because God gave you the authority. So men, you need to stand up, but hold on, you gotta be a man first. Because guess what? If you ain't following God, then she is not permitted to follow you. I can show you in scripture. Oh, I I, I know what the scriptures say. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because if you're going in the ditch, ain't no sense, and she going in the ditch too. God is trying to get everybody to get back in order. That's what this, that's what the moral of this life is all about. We're playing with demons on our jobs. You know, doggone well, that boss is demonic. You really think it's going to be a good outcome? Oh yeah, hold on to that job while you can. But right now you need to be asking God, God free me because this is a whole demon I'm working for. Come on somebody, hallelujah. This is a whole demon I'm married to. This is a whole demon I'm dating. This is a whole, y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying? Stop playing with demons. That's what God is saying. Stop cohabiting with demons. The Bible says in Amos 3, 3, can two walk together? 3, 3, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Can I tell you something? No, they can't. I don't care how good you want to be. I don't care how nice they are. They cannot walk together. And demons walk 
and work together. Children of God, if you are a true child of God, you will see that demonic entity and you will do something and say something because guess what? I can't keep my mouth shut around demons. I'm sorry. They, they don't like me and I don't like them. And if they are comfortable around you, then you need to check yourself, woman of God, man of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Cohabiting with demons. Y'all wonder why the church is full of demons? Cohabiting with demons. Having a demon preach in the pulpit. You know when he demonic. Oh, I'm about to go here. They're going to get mad, God. They're going to get mad. You see that stuff Joe Osteen did? Well, he, he ain't with God anyway. Y'all get mad if you want. Let me tell y'all something. Because y'all ain't ready for me tonight, but I'm going to go ahead. The Bible says the world loves its own. And if you really are a child of God, the world don't love you. I just said something. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. If you are truly walking with God, the world don't love you. So when the world love you, y'all need to open your eyes and stop playing this game. Stop playing this game. Having money don't mean that you have God. Oh, come on, somebody. Having a big church don't mean that you have God. You better understand who is the God of this world. Y'all sitting there playing them games. We just like Jesus, honey. They didn't like us. They didn't like Jesus and they're not going to like us. Hallelujah. God says, stop playing with demons. Stop sleeping with demons. Stop marrying demons. It's time for to start exposing demons. Hallelujah. Jesus never played with demons. He never did. He wasn't their friends. He, wasn't, he didn't play with them. He cast them out. The reason why we have a church with no power, because you're playing with the same demon that you're supposed to be casting out, said God. Y'all sitting up there playing with them. I'm going to tell you right now, people don't like me because I don't play. I, I call it like I see it. And guess what? Honestly, you have the same authority. People, people don't understand. It's not about a title anymore. It is about the presence and the power of God. If you out of order, air in their body, anybody have the right to call you on your mess. Everybody. That's right. Hallelujah. We don't, we're not exempt. Are you serious? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But God say that the body of Christ has become tainted. Let me go back to um, what he said. Hallelujah. Cohabiting with demons, tainting the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Count the call, said God. I, I can tell you so many people that fell. Samson, Solomon, oh my God. Powerful people of God. Let's go in the natural. Y'all know how I'm not going to call names tonight. Y'all know how many powerful men and women have, fell, have fallen playing with these demons. I'm telling you what God say. People of God, it's not to scare you. It's to put you in the fear of the Lord, but also walk in faith. You must have self-control. You must not, not let anybody or anything take overtake the God in you. Don't you understand? They're trying to taint you. They're trying to move you from God. And when they move you from God, that means you are powerless. God gave you an assignment. And I'm going to tell you how it's supposed to go. You're supposed to die for that assignment. Hallelujah to his name. You're supposed to have so much authority in you that anybody or anything comes against that assignment is your enemy. Hallelujah to his name. Nobody playing. Y'all wonder what. Let me tell you. I, I checked it at the door. I, I, I don't have no choice. And, and I try. You just don't know. I try not to. And, and God wake me up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Deanna, you better deal with that. Hallelujah. He said, Deanna, you better deal with that or it's going to deal with you. Hallelujah. That's how it's rolling. Either you deal with that demon or that demon will deal with you. And, and, and by the way, let me, let me just go ahead and tell you, they're not playing. They're trying to kill you. They're trying to steal. They're trying to destroy. They're not playing. So this is a warning. Thus saith the Lord, stop cohabiting with demons. You wonder why you ain't got no power? What have you touched that was demonic? Who have you touched that's demonic? Hallelujah to his name. I didn't say be perfect because none of us are. But he said, be holy, striving towards perfection. Stop playing with demons. Stop playing with demons. Stop playing with demons. I don't care. And some of them, y'all married to you. Well, you know what to do. Hallelujah. You wonder why you can't get it together. You know why. You got to. And, and let, me, let me help you. But God, I, I don't, I'm going to be alone. Or, or God, I, I, I ain't going to Honey. You are never alone. I don't know who this is for. You are never alone, my sister, my brother. Now, you might have to carry your water alone. Oh, come on, somebody. We all got to do that. Let me tell you something. It was a reason Jesus went to that cross. 
And there was some times that he was alone. You remember they all left him the night he got arrested? Can you imagine the night you, that you get arrested knowing you're getting ready to die that everybody that you was rolling with leave you? I can't imagine how that felt. So there are some times you're going to have to carry your water alone. But my brother, my sister, I am a witness that God will be with you. God will strengthen you. God will give you courage. God will send the angels to minister to you if he have to. Hallelujah. Because it may be for your very life. Consider the cost. Consider the cost. Because one touch from a demonic person can taint your whole life. But yet one touch from you can change their whole life. Maybe that's all you were supposed to do. Speak that word and go on about your business. Some of y'all trying to uh, sleep with your assignment. Some of y'all trying to marry your assignment. Oh, I just said something. Hallelujah. All right. That's all God told me to say. Not somebody going to say, I thought God hates divorce. You know what, sister? Why don't you tell her, to, and I'm not trying to be ugly, but since you come on here not understanding what I'm saying, I'm going to go ahead and address you. God does hate divorce. But do, but does God hate a man killing a woman or a woman killing a man too? So, um, you know, y'all like to quote scripture and scripture is scripture. But there are circumstances too. God never told no man to hit on no woman till he kill her and vice versa. So I don't know where you coming from. All right. Because ain't nobody advocating divorce. But what is what is, sister? Don't come on my life with that. I don't mean no harm, but don't stop my flow. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to tell it like a T.I. is anyway. I ain't scared of none of you. You know that, right? Right? Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell it how it tells. God, uh, the scripture is 100% correct. But if I wouldn't have loved my husband, he'd have killed me. So what you saying? I'm supposed to stay with somebody and get killed? I rebuke every fiber of that being. And I, I do. I do stand that we are not supposed to be in any type of domestic violence. So I don't know what you're talking about. So um, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So anywho, I love y'all. God bless y'all. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll lots. <laughs> y'all crazy. Y'all ain't messing with y'all tonight. <laughs> anyway, God bless everybody. <laughs> Roll lots, soldiers, for that is who you are. God bless. <laughs>